Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, J.D. Teeter. I'm a business development manager for motion control here at PowerMation. Uh, I'll be your host this morning as we talk about uh, actuators for food and beverage operations. Just a quick infomercial on those for anybody not familiar with PowerMation. Uh, we're a technology uh, driven and focused distributor of controls and automation serving the upper Midwest since uh, 1961. During that time, we've maintained our position on the forefront of manufacturing, pushing ourselves to be uh, daily to deliver innovative automation solutions with exceptional customer service. If this is your first experience with us, uh, welcome aboard and uh, please take a few minutes today uh, after the presentation to check us out at powermation.com. That's P O W E R M as in Mike, A T I O N, powermation.com. Uh, we're joined today by one of our premier motion control partners, Tolematic. Uh, presenting this morning from Tolematic will be Richard Braga. Rich is a senior regional sales manager living here in Minnesota and serving the upper Midwest areas of Minnesota, Wisconsin, North and South Dakota. He's been with Tolematic for 38 years now and is a wealth of knowledge on all things linear as well as automation in general. So our adventure begins uh, with a brief background on Tolematic and their 60 plus years of automation excellence. After that, we're gonna jump into some application and product characteristics specific to the food and beverage market. Our journey ends with application examples, why Tolematic is the clear choice for food and beverage operations, some sizing selection information and resources that are available to you uh, to help you with uh, achieve all your automation goals. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Rich. Thanks, Rich. Hey, good morning. Thank you, JD. And welcome to our, uh, our, our presentation. A little bit about Tolematic. So Tolematic has been in business since the mid-50s. Our main headquarters is outside Minneapolis uh, in Hamill, Minnesota. There's a picture of our factory there. We're just five miles. Um, west of Plymouth. We're, we're, we're a privately held company. We have 250 employees. We're an ISO, uh, ISO company. We have offices uh, in China, a small manufacturing uh, facility, an office in Mexico, and an office in Germany. Um, we do a lot of our own uh, machining of our components, and we make our planetary roller screws were one of the few manufacturers in the world that actually make their own roller screws that go in our actuator. We pride ourselves into having a industry leading uh, lead time and a very focused customer service experience on sizing, selecting out of the box experience when you get our product. So we have uh, core values that we that we follow and it's, it's customers first, speed, flexibility, ability to customize product for applications, uh, continuous improvement, positive attitude. Uh, those are all, all from the owner, all from the top down. So as you see in the snapshot of picture, Tolmatic makes a whole bunch of different things. Uh, electric linear actuators uh, that have uh, been born out of our base model pneumatic actuators that are here in this slide of uh, same extrusions, same bodies, and then flip those over to electric actuators. And then we do have a line of power transmission products, but today we're focusing on our electric actuators. We're focusing on uh, actuators that are used in food and food and beverage applications. Here's the snapshot. Here's, here's a picture of the world, half of it. <laughs> and then that's uh, our office in Germany and China and Minneapolis. So one of the things uh, that is is uh, growing in the, in the market today is electric actuation in the food and beverage market. Predominantly uh, through the years, most of the actuators that would be in a, in a food plant so we're talking somebody who bags lettuce or makes carrots or uh, packages apples or makes cheese, anything, uh, makes hamburger patties, anything where you're going to the grocery store, all that stuff is obviously packaged in a facility. And most of those applications through the years have been used pneumatically and some hydraulically, 
which probably would make your skin crawl when you think of hydraulic fluid on your, your hamburger patty. Uh, most of those were taking place with, you know, food, a food grade oil of some sorts in an in a actuator body. And as that, as this market now has pushed for a couple different demands, uh, they want corrosion resistant. So they, they, they want some sort of stainless steel actuator to, to handle their uh, cleaning facilities uh, a protocol. Um, they also want to have controlled linear motion in a lot of these applications position, repeatability, motion control, all those things. And so we dove into this market and developed products specifically for that market and continue to expand on it and add sizes and different options uh, to address that. So this snapshot picture here shows our ERD family, the stainless steel round things that look like pneumatic cylinders, but they're all screw drives. And then we have some larger units that are white painted, uh, epoxy painted that go into higher force ranges for different applications. We serve a whole bunch of customers that people would know these names, uh, major Fortune 500 companies that are producing all the food, milk and cheese and everything else that uh, we're consuming here in the world. So, they're driving us to make actuators to, to fit their applications. And so in the past, if you had an aluminum based product and someone's washing it down with a recipe of chemicals, at some point it's gonna oxidize that, that aluminum, it's gonna rust bolts, it's gonna look just horrible and it, it's just not gonna uh, hold up in an application like that. So, Customers found ways to cover them and shroud them and bag them and all sorts of things to make them last. But of the care of the four main categories that that we address that most customers obviously want to address is bacteria growth prevention. Okay, you, you read in the news where a plant may get shut down or they have a tainted product that has gone out. You know, something's gone wrong in the process. So this, this whole wash down and bacteria prevention uh, category is huge. Obviously they want it corrosion resistant and most stainless steel uh, can withstand wash down. So that you have to have a stainless steel product. It has to be able to, to handle a wash down that's, that's aggressive. So IP69K is very common. This is something that's high pressure within a certain amount of inches away from the product and it's getting washed down. And then on top of that, if they're, they're designing equipment, they obviously want, hey, give me the most flexible thing I can have. And that's why electric actuators are, are growing uh, in general in the market and specifically in, in this market. So we'll dive into these three kind of buckets of corrosion resistance, uh, wash down protection and bacterial uh, growth prevention. So corrosion resistance, um, one of the things about customers when they say we're washing down our machine, what they're doing is they're, they're developing a recipe that cleans their machine. And this could be something that they do once a shift, twice a shift, once every three days. It's all, it's a, it's a very wide spectrum of protocol. And the recipes often change because you want to outrun the bacteria. So at some point, uh, you want to find something that's going to continue to work. So uh, they can be very harsh and they can be uh, very aggressive. So you need products that can withstand that. Most of that can be handled by stainless steel components. You know, 304, 316, resist uh, cor corrosion for a very long, uh, reliable. Um, of, of life characteristic. And the last thing is, is actuators that you're sealing um, to prevent water from getting in have to have the right compounds uh, of material that won't degrade when you spray it down with, with, with um, some washdown solution. So we look at those 
And so one of the things Solomatic does is design under that criteria for IP69K, having these tested at a facility here in the Midwest to make sure they pass that rating. Um, so whether that's just a straight actuator without a motor or the motor is enclosed in our SS2 option, which is a can, which I'll show you an enclosure. I'll, I'll show you that in another slide or third party motor. So these have all been tested and they have to be tested because you have to pass a, a, a very specific uh, specification and signed off by it's just not problematic, but other, other uh, government agencies involved. So that's number one, washdown protection. So under those considerations, you have to design for that. So you have to have the industry O-ring and seals, which is a standard blue that shows that that, that is uh, works for that. Uh, you need welded seams on a lot of applicate on a lot of actuators. You're not threading them together. You're actually welding them together so they're completely sealed tight. And um, the fasteners are also, um, you know, a point where bacteria and water can pool and get under that that crevice where that fastener is screwed to a housing, and we don't want that. So you have to have hygienic fasteners to eliminate those, those points of, of, of contamination. So when we started making the ERD product, we started with three small sizes that I'm pointing my arrow to. The original goal was, hey, we're gonna replace a, a many a pneumatic applications with a, a simple, electric actuator that has a ball screw uh, in, in the body. And so uh, it was very economical. They still are. Uh, we have some wash down solutions in, in some of the sizes. These, aren't, these, these three sizes aren't um, USDA rated, but they work in many applications in, in the food and beverage industry. And in those three sizes, uh, the limitation obviously is how much force and what size screw you can put in those bodies and to um, address those applications. We quickly found that it, it that had to be expanded. So we continued this on this journey on. So these three small sizes, then with the enclosure, here's that picture of that uh, enclosure that a, our stepper motor or a servo motor goes into this enclosure. And then the three larger sizes are all USDA rated uh, and they can obviously get into the, the bigger the body, the bigger the screw, you can get into applications that you're pushing about 8,000 pounds of force required. So from 10, 10 pounds of force in the ERD-6 all the way up to you know 8,000 pounds with a roller screw. So um, any stroke length that you need, we build everything to order. And so there's, and as long as it doesn't pass our our limitation of manufacturing, we're building them all to order. So this ERD family started out small, quickly expanded. It was like a, a cutaway version of, of one of the smaller sizes. So you can see it contains a ball screw, that thrust bearing on the back end that supports the screw. You have a, a, a standard NEMA kind of frame square on the back end for all the different motors that are mounting to these actuators in this fashion an inline or there's a reverse parallel box to it. So it looks very similar to an air cylinder, but it's got a motor on it, it's got a stainless steel body. So they either come with uh, the, the ability to anti-rotate on the inside so it won't, uh, the uh, thrust tube won't turn, or you can get one that's uh, non-anti-rotate and then um, handle that um, with machine design. So pretty straightforward, it's all 300 series stainless steel. The, so two things happen in an electric actuator application in a food market, and one of the big hurdles is the motor. So you, most customers will either use a, a washdown rated motor of some sort, and we'll build the interface and ship an actuator and the customer client can attach the motor to to our actuator. Um, if they want a complete solution from Tolomatic, then we 
then we supply this actuator that has an enclosure on the back end and the motor is is in this enclosure and then we have uh, communication and power coming out the back end here with these cord grips for high pressure wash down. So now you have everything all contained. You have a drive separate in a panel and now you have an actuator that can withstand um, those types of you know aggressive applications and it's rated for IP69K, which is the highest rating in terms of this wash down. As we get into bigger sizes, they're designed differently. So uh, we're actually welding these together and they're, we're not threading them on. And so we're, you can't see this, but it's you know very smooth, all stainless steel. Again, you have this reverse parallel box uh, that we're showing here. And here's a motor uh, enclosure on this, on this back end. As we got into designing uh, larger units, uh, you can get uh, bolt screws or a roller screw in it for higher forces and longer life. They also have an, an internal lubrication port so you can lubricate this actuator as it's running in the field on a maintenance program and get uh, the proper lubrication to the screw in the nut. These are all USDA rated uh, and they're obviously for. Uh, it's a government rating and it, it's very acceptable in so many different applications. So as we look at the ERD family in, in, in general, they're great for replacing air cylinders in, in a, an application where somebody wants position, repeatability, a little bit of motion control. They're all 300 series stainless steel. You have three choices really of ball screws. You have an Acme screw with a composite nut for low duty applications. So it's a, it's a very economical choice. You have a, a ball screw, various ball screws and, and pitches available for different speed requirements. And then a roller screw, which is a planetary nut on a, a finely machined screw to give very high forces, excellent repeatability and, and very long life. You can order anti-rotate for most all sizes. One of the things we do well here, we talk about this year motor here, uh, compa uh, compatible product. We have a matrix of, of all sorts of different motors that mount to our actuators. And we, we make all the interfaces and the mounting plates on the fly that are in this, this recipe. Thousands of motors, manufacturers, so we can supply our actuators to a host of different customers and clients that want to use their own motor or maybe uh, perhaps a power mason's teaming up with us and we're, we're recipeing their motor to our actuator to uh, present a complete solution and i said that i previously mentioned they're all uh, bigger larger sizes of usda and this washdown rating so as we look to the right here, there's a host of different applications they've been used in. Uh, you know, volumetric filling is a very big in, in the industry, uh, slicing, chopping, and cutting, you know, whether it's carrots or celery or whatever vegetables, pick and place. They've been used a lot on gating and sorting and diverting applications for conveyors that are in a, a food plant that's they're washing down. Uh, the conveyor as well. So obviously they want that actuator to withstand that. Here's a snap, here's a picture of a of a ERD cylinder with a, a motor attached in line on the back end. One of them's painted, one of them's a stainless steel a motor. And these are for volumetric filling. So when you're replacing air cylinders and you want to get exact measurements and filling and whether it's you know chili sauce or pie recipe or doesn't really matter they you, you want to fill that can or that package or that pouch to the exact amount every time then we have them on applications in the bakery industry we have a picture here we show one that's in the vertical position and one that's in the horizontal positioning so the base family of products erd then got expanded into, into an integrated servo actuator. So we've been making 
producing integrated servo actuators for several years. One of the core questions through the years was when are you going to develop one that I can use in a food application that's all stainless steel. So in an integrated servo, the motor windings are potted into the body and you're inserting the screw in the nut and all the controls on the back end, the encoder, the brake, whatever you need be on that back end and the communication and power cable here shown coming out this, this uh, uh, connector. It's, it's very compact. It's a very clean design. Now I, you're, you're, you don't have to be concerned about, you know, my motor requirements, my mounting the motor, whether it's reverse parallel box or whether it's inline, all that goes out the window. So the IMA stainless steel is great for applications where you want to have a complete solution they they address these these bacterial growth and corrosion and wash down and performance well and they're very efficient in, in design very reliable you don't have a lot of components now yeah i don't have a belt and pulleys and couplings so they're very tight actuators very simple easy to install and all the same actuator qualities that we that we design for long life improved force and easy integration. So these come in two different sizes, and these numbers won't mean anything to you, but it's just the 22 and the 33, it just means you know how big the body is of the actuators. So horse ranges from a few hundred pounds up to 2,500 pounds. Um, you have some cool options with it. There's a replaceable cartilage on this uh, on the front end so when the seals wear you can do that in the field bottom rear and the face mount and a whole host of different feedback options for clients different hygienic uh, options for the um, fasteners so the ranges of force go from like 325 pounds up to about this 2500 pound range you know, we offer a host of different ball screw and pitch sizes and roller screws with this. And it's designed to and, and tested at Tolematic. Uh, the seals were tested in some um, specific, uh, specific uh, washdown uh, testing. So we could say if you had like more of a standard application, general higher temperature um, it kind of fits that if you need something more chemically resistant the speed's a little bit higher you needed fda approved blue color uh, seals then we we can supply that as well so kind of application dependent what you're doing with the product as uh, you're installing and using it so the front piece can be replaced and you can get a new seals with that and we kind of show the how this piece comes off and we have the seals here shown on this side view so silicone filled for the fda and then the kind of a polyurethane wiper a, a standard for the option one the rear cover this piece is is actually domed a, uh, a little bit radius so we can have the water not pool on the back end of it but it will it will fall off and then the it also comes with a breather port so you can um, exercise getting some of that um, pressure or um, out of that body which is helpful and you mount it with this front flange mounting and I got another slide on that. I'll show that. So different fasteners. Uh, some people can easily use standard hex bolts, just stainless steel with a fluorocarbon seal here behind that behind that hex bolt that fits a host of applications. Some customers, if they're going to go to the full boat, they want fasteners that are this hygienic uh, fashion, so they're polished. Um, they they're all stainless steel. They have this blue 
a ceiling material and they're very, you know, well, acceptable in applications where it's, it's complete wash down. It's a round body actuator. So how do you mount it? There's a, the, you, there's a clevis mount that you can rotate both directions and do the mounting on the, this back end. And there's a front flange mount that mounts directly to the, the nose of the actuator. On the rod end, um, there's female a rod end is a standard option. We list out what that is, M12 by you know, inch and a quarter, and M20 by inch and a half. Then you can get a male rod end uh, option as well. And then it's a, a patented lube, a tube that easy for lubrication. So the lubrication port is, is somewhat hidden, which it has to be. So it can pass these ratings and you can lubricate this actuator. All our actuators come pre-lubed at Tolomatic. And uh, so we take care of that. And here's another picture of the, the feedback cover on the back end. So feedback. We have you know different uh, uh, feedback devices that are installed in the IMA. We're showing here the, the, the there's a difference in some of the uh, length of that. A body that we need to install a hyperface a DSL feedback with a break as opposed to one that doesn't have one. And we, this product then can be used in a host of different motion control solutions and integrate into a wide variety of different uh, customers in that, in that arena. There's so many different applications. I tried to kind of narrow it down that are, um, somewhat common or that we've worked on in the past with, with our partners in the field, PowerMation uh, certainly worked on uh, several applications in the food and beverage market. A lot of these uh, uh, plants have big tanks or, or vats where product is, is being dumped in or conveyed into. So raising and lowering the lid, uh, a lot of these are either manual or they're using a big hydraulic cylinder to do that. And, and contamination of food is just, just, it's just a complete huge thing. So uh, they want to have motion control. You don't want to have a runaway solution where an air cylinder, you just apply force to it and it, it goes from point A to point B with a lot of energy. So here we're showing this lid opening, we're showing an actuator that's uh, mounted here. You can see the motor, this is an RP box connected here to this clevis, and now we're gonna lift this lid. And now we get a solution that is all stainless steel, just like all the equipment that they make. It's all one solution with the actuator and the motor and the brake and the drive and all that is, uh, comes in one complete solution. And since we make them in a wide varied uh, sizes, you can get you know higher forces because some of these lids are, are pretty, are very uh, heavy. So this kind of centered around our, our ERD 25, which is about a couple thousand pounds of force roughly, and our RSA 50. In the pharma industry, there there's a lot of or chemical. There's a lot of people who make tanks and you have to lift the lid of the tank and the tank's all stainless steel and obviously looking for that kind of actuator to marry up with the construction of the tank. So if you look at this drawing here, we're showing an actuator that is a, an ERD with the, the guide uh, mechanism attached. So it has guide rods, a tooling plate, in this housing to lift this lid. And now you get something that's completely programmed, it's motion control, it's all guided, it's all stainless steel. So, like I said previously, we do a lot in volumetric filling. You probably don't think of that when you go to the store and you're buying things, but uh, what customers want is they don't want to overfill a uh, product into a container or a package or, or whatever they're producing. They, 
So maintain the exact amount every time you can get that with a motion control system. So this is in the food and beverage market. This is a company that specializes in, in the frozen food industry and in the baking uh, side of things. So it's basically running a piston pump that's filling pies that you would buy at the, at the store. So uh, previous to announcing that we were making a, an IMA product line of stainless steel all integrated servo, uh, we designed this specifically for this client at Tolomatic. We make a lot of uh, custom products and adaptations to our products. So this customer said, hey, I have new, I, I, I want to fit into pneumatic designs. I need anti-rotate. I need something that's totally washed out. If you've ever been to one of these plants, they're, they're cleaning them. I need something that can integrate with Allen Bradley controls, and I need something that can last. It's just gonna, it's gonna pump back and forth. It's gonna give us high cycle time. So what, what can I do for this application? So this, this turned into an IMA 33, as you can see here in the picture over here. It replaced pneumatics. We put a roller screw in it to give them very long life. It was all IP69K 316, and we integrated into the Rockwell automation. So it works with all the kinetic uh, servo drives and controls in the market. So this addressed all those needs. And then from this, we branched into making this a standard offering in, in the product family of Toolmatic. Here's another application. This is volumetric piston pumps once again. So how they were doing their, uh, there's, this is like a soup place and curries. They had all manual controls. You can see here on these hand cranks to, um, to do this process. And they wanted to eliminate this whole mechanism because it had a lot of uh, possible contamination uh, points where it's just going to pull up. It's just a lot of nooks and crannies, and it was constantly being being washed down. So um, they said, "Hey, we're going to use an Allen Bradley motor that's uh, this epoxy painted, and what can we marry it to?" So then we came up with a solution. This is our ERD twenty. You can see these uh, Al Bradley monitors mounted to them. So now we have something that's all 300 uh, series stainless and it can be washed down IP69K. So really good solution for them. Uh, the round body IMA that we make is all stainless steel. We do make uh, aluminum based uh, integrated servos we have for several years. Uh, we do have some clients that would like to buy one of these um, in this fashion and have the body painted uh, with this white epoxy paint. Uh, and so now what you get here is you have, it's a very smooth body, so it's easy to paint. You can use this food grade paint. We have a 300 stainless steel rod uh, at this end, and then the same some of some of the same features, uh, the grease port and a breather port, and um, so um, the, the industry seems to be trending away from things that are painted and going to more stainless steel offerings. So it kind of depends on where products are being placed in an application, how often it's really subject to wash down and. And sometimes this is a good stopgap measure to not, not go to the, the next level. So we're showing this here. And one of the things that Tolomatic does very well with the help of some really good partners in the field and Polarmation being one of them and their, their, their people calling on clients is coming up with the right solution for your application. So. We have sizing software that you, it's uh, available on the web that you can, that you can use. Uh, customers can go on and uh, use this drive through the software and select an actuator, which gives all the motor parameters that they would need for their application. We do that for you and so does Polarmation. So the best 
way we can find a perfect solution for you is detailed application requirements. Tell us what you're doing mechanically, speed, force, cycle time, all those um, critical things that uh, the, the details are, are very critical to size, you know, the correct screw and the correct motor to marry with an actuator. Sometimes customers will give us what the, what the torque and uh, position that they're required. Some, we, we can use some of that information to determine an actuator. Um, part number crossover is a little bit more challenging when someone says, I'm using this product, what do you have that similar and we can use in motion control? Well, it, um, it's, it's wide and varied how different actuator companies select product for an application. So we, we're, we're not privy to how everybody else does it. And sometimes we'll pick that maximum number that the competitor is in at this application and it results in picking something, you know, a little bit too big. So we really like love to have this detailed application uh, requirements. Um, we uh, provide prototypes for testing, for applications. Um, and if you if you're stumbling around and, and you hey we need help you can you know, obviously reach out to uh, PowerMation or you can reach out to Tolomatic. We have an excellent technical support team that that works on applications and you can contact an engineer at Tolomatic and say hey this is what I'm doing how can you help me and we we do that every day so this is a very very common way that we do things. Tolomatic, you know, I think we, we do several things well for the industry in, in applications and, um, oops, sorry about that. Uh, we have very innovative products that we design for customers along the way and we turn them into product families. So all our products are born out of ap real applications in the field and expanded on we build everything to order at Tolomatic. Nothing's pre-built. That's a three-week lead time. We modify 35, 40% of our product before it leaves the building per a customer request. So we're doing several things that uh, other companies uh, care not to do. That's just how we roll. We have great customer service. We care deeply about uh, the whole experience of Tolomatic and, you um, and, and we have this year motor here program that I previously mentioned. So we work in conjunction with our partners in the field. They're the ones on the front line and we're supporting them in, in all these applications. 